Okay, in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to sort of process a flow chart, really. Uh, this came about from a support query. And so the, the support query was about doing some kind of soil analysis. So I based it on that, but I haven't used the actual example that was sent to me for the support thing, mainly because it didn't have all the questions there. Uh, so I've gone online and done a bit of searching around. I know nothing about soil, but I found this uh, um, flow chart. And this will, by answering questions, lead you down the path to work out what kind of soil you've got. Now, let me say right off the bat, Software Product Magic was never really built to do this kind of thing. Uh, but with the extra features that have gone in recently, this is more than possible. So what the aim here is, is to ask them questions and then dependent on how they answer, display information about their soil type. So the other thing I've done is to create some HTML files, there they are, and these represent the different outcomes, what the different soil types are. So if I just uh, load one of those up in the browser, so number one is for PT soil and then a little bit of information about it. And I've just pulled this information off various web pages for now, just for the demonstration. Um, so I have my set of uh, HTML files uh, for each soil type on the spreadsheet. I've also created one that says, we don't know what that is. Uh, just in case they answer the questions in such a way that we can't uh, definitively work out what they've got. So, basically, uh, all I've done is I've gone down this list and I've said, okay, this is going to be number one. This is going to be number two type, three, four, five, six, seven. And they relate to the zero through seven HTML files that I've created. Okay, let's bring up software product magic and uh, so this um, is where those HTML files are. Now obviously they had no tags in them at all so when I went to the next screen I, there was no point in scanning for tags it wouldn't have found anything uh, so all of these I've added manually I've done add a tag and then I've done one for the question about the type of peat that it is about uh, whether the soil sorry is mainly peat based and then for some of these, I've then created a value. And this is just a temporary holder. It doesn't matter what you call these. Uh, but basically, I'm using the same technique that was used in the e-calorie weight loss uh, demonstration video. If you remember with that video, uh, the issue we had was that we had to do various mathematics and arrive at an answer. Now, remember, with Software Product Magic, the, you know, the conditions and the evaluation system is fairly rudimentary. So when you're doing the processing, you can't say for those, and this is just for the benefit of those that are watching this that have done some programming. You can't say, if this is the case, then make this tag here equal this. Um, you can only affect the tag you're working on. So what we have to do is store a value based on the answer in these in these values here and these tags here and if the answer uh, doesn't require a value to be stored then we just stick a zero in and then we add them all up and we see what the total is that's pretty much what we're doing uh, and then because of the way the spreadsheet if they say yes to this jumps straight to the display section uh, I've needed to put in some conditional jumps as well um, so the first three are fairly easy if it's that it's going to set one of the things to one. If it's not that, and then it is that, it's gonna set V2 to two, and then jump to the end. It's gonna set V3 to three, and jump to the end. Here it gets a little bit different, because if they say yes to this, it doesn't need to set anything at this stage. It can't until it's asked another question. So in those cases, uh, you will see. And when I first set this up, and I, I was just playing with it in my head, I actually went through and put in uh, a jump and a V thing directly after each question and then went through and took out the ones I didn't need when I had it straight in my head. So, uh, let's 
get back to number one. Okay, is the soil mainly peat? Answer yes or no. If they answer yes, we're going to put the value 1 into tag V1, otherwise we're going to put the value 0 in. Don't need any decimal places in the answer. And then we're going to do a conditional jump to the end. And the end part of the thing is this eval1 tag, which is where I'm going to add all the values together. So uh, if, if that now has 1, now I could have equally, in this condition, I could have equally have put that in there. Because basically that's only going to be one if that is true. So doing what I've done there is exactly the same as if I had done that. Okay, question two. Is, uh, is the soil dark uh, and stained fingers black or grey? I'm literally working straight off this spreadsheet now. So the, the thing at the moment, V1 will have zero in it if... Uh, They've answered no to that. And now we're going to get a yes, no answer. If they say yes, we're going to store two in V2. And two, because remember I said that's one, that's answer two, answer three, and so on. I just want my answer number stored so that I can refer to it. And then jump to the end. And then... Question three, this is another straightforward one because it's either yes or no. Uh, if it's yes and it's a certain type, we're going to set it to that and jump to the end. And let's just have a look. We do that in the next question. Uh, conditional equation, is it shallow? Put three in V3. Otherwise, don't put anything in there. We'll put zero in there. And then, if that's the case, jump to the end. Okay, now we're into the uh, slightly trickier situations here. So really, this, I mean, I say they're trickier. They're, they're trickier than the ones above, but they're still really straightforward when you think about it. We're going to ask if the soil feels rough and gritty, and if it does, we then have to go and ask another question. And if they say no, then it needs to carry on processing the next question. So I don't need to set a value at this stage. I just need to know if they've answered yes or no, and then jump to the appropriate place. If they said yes, then it's going to jump to the question that asks... And I've called the question soil 40 sand. And you will see there's a question here. Uh, is subsoil f uh, greater than 40 centimetres deep sand or sandstone based? So it will. if they say uh, yes to that, it's going to jump to that question. Otherwise, it will continue processing. And the next question will be this one here. So if we look at that. And there it is. Is it smooth and buttery? And again, we're in a situation where we're either going to ask the next question uh, or we're going to uh, do a jump. Now, here's the interesting thing. The way that this flow chart works, this last question, there isn't a no option. So, and I'm sure that soil experts will say, well, there are other things you can ask and this isn't a full flow chart. But um, so really, from a programming point of view or processing point of view if they say no to that there's no point in me asking that because they can only answer yes to it according to this flow chart so what i'm doing is if they say no i'm going to jump straight to that question ignore that one completely if they say yes we're going here so If they say yes, jump to that question, the, the 100 question, which is this one here. Otherwise, it's going to process the next question, which in actual fact is this one here, because we're ignoring that one. Okay, there's that question. Yes or no again. Okay, now, if we go and look at that uh, question down here, if they say yes, then we have a soil type 7. If they say no then it's a soil type 6, it's the medium soil. So into V6, that's exactly what I put, however they answer it. Now I've got an interesting jump here because at that point, regardless of how they answer, I've got the correct value, so I need to jump to the end. Um, but after that question, I don't need to check a condition, I always want to jump to the end because the next question in the list is one of these other ones from...